everyone, Mr. Hisner here, and in today's lesson, we are going to be looking at midpoints. Um, so last time we looked at um, segments and segment addition. So this will follow that same rule, that same principle of, se uh, of segment addition, where we can add the segments measures. Um, but mid but midpoints have a special property in that they are directly in the middle of the line, of the line segment. So um, if with if we are looking at uh, a midpoint, we are always looking at the point that is right in the middle of a segment. So here we go. Let's say I have a line segment. Let's call this AB. And there is some point directly in the middle that is, we, we will call point M. So um, what we will notice that is if something is directly in the middle, then there is an equal measure on each side. And we denote that equal measure with these two little hash marks, right? Um, and so we will say that um, if M is the midpoint, is the midpoint of the segment AB, Um, then we have some things that are true. Then, then let me write that better. So then there are some things that will be true. Um, two things will be true. That A, B, no, not A, B, A, M. So this segment here, the measure of this segment will be equal to the measure of this segment, M, B, on the other side. So these two measurements will be equal. And... What we learned also, so, and, that the two segments, if their measures are equal, then the segments are congruent. If the measure are equal, if the measures are equal, the segments are congruent. Um, so, uh, what else do we wanna write? So, remember that midpoint, This is the middle, and when something is in the middle, there's equal room on either side, right? So that means that things are equal. So this is the middle, so we're thinking equal and congruent. Midpoint is in the middle, it makes stuff equal, it makes things congruent, right? It makes numbers equal, it makes measurements equal, it makes segments, it makes figures congruent. Okay, so let's see how that translates to some algebraic properties of a midpoint. Here we have, if Q is the midpoint, so I'm gonna mark Q here. If Q is the midpoint of the segment PR, so Q is the midpoint of this whole segment here, we want to find the value of X. We want to find the value of X. Okay, so here we go. We have, um, we will know that P, Q, the segment, is congruent to Q, R, segment. Uh, we also know that the measure of P, Q is equal to the measure of Q, R. And since we want to use numbers, since we want to use algebra to solve this, we are going to be using the property of equality, right? Because this is going to lend itself very nicely. And in fact, we'll know that these two values will be equal. So I'm gonna write that uh, nice and neatly over here. So 7x minus 16 is equal to 4x minus two. And now I'm gonna balance this equation because it looks like there's no like terms on this side, no like terms on this side. That means we're ready to go ahead and use inverse operations to solve. So how about I get the numbers on the right side, so I'm gonna add 16 to both sides. And so these two will cancel, and I'm gonna subtract 4x from both sides. So now these two are canceled. Okay, so 7x's minus 4x's, this is 3x, is equal to negative two plus 16.
Oh, this is a positive two. My bad. My bad. Positive two plus 16. So this is going to be 18. And then finally, we can divide both sides by three. Or of course, you can stop and ask yourself three times what number is equal to 18? Three times what number is equal to 18? Or divided by three, and we find that x is equal to six. So again, these are canceling out. Um, so really, midpoints, um, whenever you have a midpoint, it's pretty simple to solve. Um, just remember that, let's say for example, that if we were given this uh, figure only, we weren't told that r was the midpoint, we were just told to solve for something, but we had these two hash marks. Okay, so the two hash marks mean that qr is congruent to rs, and thus we can conclude that if the two segments are congruent, then their measures are equal. This is rs. Um, and from that, from this two, from these two criteria, so congruence, equality, then we can consider that R is the midpoint. Um, so it's this, it's this idea that the midpoint has these conditions. Um, we could be given the, uh, the congruencies, and then we could conclude the equality, and then we can conclude that R then must be right in the middle and must be the midpoint. Um, so we can actually make that conclusion because remember, we can go both ways, actually, that, like we just did. So we can go from equality, we can go from equality and congruence. That means it must be in the middle, and thus it must be the midpoint. Um, so we will have some, some problems on this in the uh, lesson ahead. Thanks for watching.